Hey, welcome to the studio. This is Wookie and Leah from Mandala Studios and part four of making a latex goat mask, base painting. So to start off, this is me drying the thickened latex you saw me put in at the end of the last one. And then I'm going to look for the correct picture, the reference picture on the emails in order to make sure I get the, the right color. We're starting with portrait pink acrylic paint there mixed with Pro Stick, which is um, so prosthetic adhesive. And that's for the ears and nose. Just brush that in, then we're going to dry it off with a hairdryer and repeat that a few times to build up some thickness of colour so that we don't get any bleed of the latex darkening as it dries over time. There we go, that's a little hairdryer and a second coat. So this one's going to be flocked, but we won't flock the ears and the nose, those ones will be those bits will be left. The reason we add the prosade into the pro stick into the paint is so that it stays stretchy and flexible and more adhesively stuck to the surface of the latex because the acrylic itself will just crack and fall off. Yep. So I'm mixing up more colour here. We're going for the main colour of the mask. So we're adding some sienna, burnt sienna, I raw think sienna. We had some buff, buff some titanium, buff titanium in there, into yeah. the pink. So the pink is some more too. prosade. Yeah. Now this one we're going to flock over, so this is the base colour which the flock will sit on top of. It needs to be tonally correct for that, tonally correct for the finished product, but it's not the final finished surface. More colour will be added once we flock. And we're going around getting all the rest of the mask there. If you note we're leaving the inside of the horn sockets unpainted, so that when we're gluing the horns in, the glue is going to stick to the latex, not to just to the paint. So we're not just relying on the stickiness of the prosthetic adhesive yep. to hold the horns in fundamentally. Yep. And we've also gone around the inside edge of the eyes just to make sure that, the color, that you don't see any of the white foam behind from that. Making sure that's all sorted out around the back edge. So now we're going to add the strap, that's an elastic strap with a ladder buckle, we just sew the buckle into place onto the elastic, thread it through, then sew the end back over so it can't fall off. It's nice and adjustable, um, we do this at this stage because it's much harder to get the strap in if we wait until we've added the fur or we've added the flock, it's much easier to damage something on the mask if we leave it till later. And it allows us to stick it onto a head to do those operations. It does, yes. So we just add some contact adhesive onto the strap and into the yep. mask and then put the two together once it's dry. Yep, that strap will sit just above the eye line so it'll sit up across the across the bottom of the forehead. So this is cutting the fur for the back of the mask. This one's going to have um, thick fur dreads. Yeah, thick fur dreads. I'm using a razor blade cutting on the back of the fabric to avoid cutting the pile of fur. Yep. <laughs> Struggling with words today. Um, and you'll know it's uh, thinner at the top than the bottom. The, the, fab, the fur, the direction of the fur goes from top to the bottom. So we stick the fur in centre front first and then slowly, carefully start to cut out all the bits that need to sit around the ears and the horns, carefully just yeah, teasing sure. it away. And then as we glue the edge down, we roll the fur pile back over the edge to create a soft, naturalish looking edge to the fur where it connects onto the mask itself. Yeah. On this one, we went partially down around the back of the ears. A, it makes the fur act slightly like a hood. It also looks quite nice. I'm splitting the fur along the back of the mask into thinner strips. I'm aiming for really about an inch to an inch and a half. And then I glue down the edges of those and roll them up. This one usually results in probably sat there going, ow, ow, so I put my hands in hot glue. So. <laughs> so just twist up each individual dread and just keep working your way up. Put the glue down one edge, twist them up and then smooth them down so the fur sticks so they stick together nicely. And just repeat that throughout the whole thing. Yeah, gives a really nice look, especially if you've got a couple of them draped over the front of the front of the shoulder. Like that. Now onto the flocking. This is an electrostatic 
uh, operation running at 10,000 volts, which electrically charges some nylon fibers to cause them to stick into the surface at a right angle to the earth area. So to start with, we cover the entire surface of the mask in a prosthetic adhesive. We do a couple of layers of that so that the whole thing is ready for the adhesion of the nylon fibres. Once we've put the adhesive everywhere we want the fibres to stick, we put the fibres into the little basket on the electrostatic wand, earth the mask itself and then fire the fibres at it using the electro electrostatic charge. So the mask is sat on top of a box that will take any extra flock and suck it away so we're not breathing that in. We're starting with the longest fibre, so I think these are about a centimetre, maybe 1.2 centimetres long, um, and we'll move to the shorter lengths. For the first one, it looks like it's all going in in one, co one colour. Um, so that's all, all one colour with the long, with the long flock. And, and you can see the little thing is the earth thing. Now for the shorter flocks, I'm mixing up a blend of colours, starting with a brown and a beige, with some red and some white. I'm just trying to tonally match the artwork we were trying to get to, whilst yeah. keep it kind of in keeping with the orange tone underneath, which was about right. Yeah, and it'll so make we... it quite interesting as well, given a more interesting look than just using one colour. And you can see that's filling in the gaps underneath the longer fur, the longer flock. Once that's been left to dry for a, couple, for a day or so, we then start airbrushing. You can see with this one, on the forehead is a symbol that wanted to be left without any fur. So what we did for that is we just scraped away the glue once the flock was done. Then we're just going in with the airbrush blacks, browns, just trying to get the tones to match and get all the shading and accents, colours we needed from the thing. So this is where we actually glue the horns in. We're using a uh, one part contact adhesive. Yep. The two horns glued in, in the right positions, mm. and airbrushing around to bring that all together and also adding some more airbrush to the horns themselves. Particularly where they join into the head and just add some black to the grey horns. Yep. And there you go, one finished goat mask. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.